strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you could possibly imagine. Welcome back everybody, it is Bulldog here, and today it is time to finally talk about one of the most popular games on Hive, Terracor. Terracor is an idle exploration game, and a lot of you have been asking me for months to make a video on this game. Uh, I hadn't done it yet, but now is the now is the perfect time for me to create a video because they have actually been sponsoring my Splinterlands Guild. Some of you have probably seen this already, but if if you play Splinterlands in game, you might come across members of the TerraCoreGame.com guild. That is the guild run by me. We just upgraded upgraded to tier three, so we're gonna have a we're gonna have a lot of fun there. Thanks to uh, thanks to the sponsorship from TerraCore. But we had the sponsorship, so I thought, okay, if we're doing a sponsorship. I gotta I've gotta go in. I've gotta play the game. I've gotta see what this is is all about. So I finally hopped in. Finally started playing. So in this video, we're gonna go over first off what TerraCore is what you can do in the game and then i'm going to i'm going to offer five tips for getting started in terracore because when i first started i made a ton of mistakes i made a lot of terrible decisions so if you are familiar with the game and checking out this video might be looking at my stats on the left hand side and wondering what the heck i am doing i made some poor decisions so i'm going to help others hopefully get off to a better start in this game than I did. So, all right, first off, what is TerraCore? What is what is an idle exploration game? So, first off, there is a there is a cost to get started. You do have to purchase a license. It does it does cost about $10 to acquire a license and get started in the game. I do have an affiliate link which is located down below. So, if you go sign up, I would appreciate it if you use the link. You certainly don't have to though. You hop in, you will get into a screen like this. This is the main TerraCore game dot com screen and on the left hand side you are going to see your stats here so we're gonna we're gonna have a couple stats and we can upgrade these using scrap so what you're going to be doing essentially through throughout the game you're going to be trying to collect scrap and you're going to be trying to collect eventually nfts and then you can use those use that scrap use those nfts to improve your improve your character improve your stats so that you can go earn more scrap there are, and more NFTs. The NFTs are the part I'm, I'm most looking forward to. But anyways, there are two ways, two main ways, especially when you get started, that you're going to earn scrap. The first is you're just going to accumulate it passively. You'll see down here at the bottom of the screen, my scrap is is continually going up. Every, every few seconds, it's going to low, that's going to be higher. And I, at any time, I can claim this scrap here. And that will that will allow me to it's basically going to give me that scrap permanently. So you only have so many claims a day. So you have to to kind of be strategic about when you are going to claim. You have a stat over here that is called engineering by upgrading your engineering. You can see here it would cost me 36 scrap to upgrade engineering again by upgrading engineering. I will earn scrap faster. So I'm going to passively earn more scrap. You also have a damage stat. Damage will allow you to go attack other players. This is something that's kind of unique about this game. You can go attack other players and directly steal their scrap. And the scrap is a is a cryptocurrency. If you come over here to the two Hive Engine, you can come and you can purchase it. Right now, one scrap is worth about about two cents here on the on the secondary market. So this is a this is crypto that you are earning. You can go steal crypto from other players. If you have more damage than them, you can go attack them. So if we come over here to battle, you'll see I've been I've been robbed though at least recently. People are stealing my scrap. And uh, but this this will show us people that we can fight. I've got a higher attack value than they have a defense value. We're going to go back and talk about that here in a, just just a second. If your attack is uh is higher than their defense, than actually equal or higher than their defense, you can come over there and fight them and steal a percentage of their scrap. So we can actually, let's, let's do one right here. Let's, let's go fight. We can see it here on screen. We're gonna fight. I'm going to confirm that transaction. And then it is going to, hopefully, as long as, as, long as they don't dodge, I am going to actually steal. There it is. There is the attack. I have stolen three scrap. Three scrap from them. So see, I've got my I've got my stash down here. I'm now going to claim that so that nobody else steals that from me. So I'll come down here. I will claim 
that scrap and now that is scrap that I that I that I permanently I permanently own so I can go use that too I can go sell that on the market I can go use it to upgrade my character so the damage so defense is on the other side the higher my defense is the fewer people that can attack me and steal my scrap so upgrading my defense is going to allow me to collect more to grow a larger stash that I can collect later and then we also we have stash size down here which which shows how large I can I can grow that. If my if my stash was so I got an attack and I got three scrap. If my stash was only two, I would have capped out at two and could have only claimed two of that scrap. And uh, so you want to grow your stash size a little bit to allow you to to allow you to claim more scrap. It also increases your dodge, increases your luck. So dodge is the chance to completely avoid it, avoid an attack, not get your scrap stolen. Luck is is involved more when we get to into quests here which we'll, we'll talk talk about in, in a little bit um quest or bosses actually bosses are where you really need a lot of luck i wish i that that's what i'm growing my stash up right now for is is for luck again we'll talk about that in in a second those are the main ways that you're going to be able to accumulate scrap you can also go out and get some nfts if you'd like to buy you can buy nfts you can buy weapons you can buy armor you can buy a spaceship to go to other to go to other planets you can come in here and you can buy a crate or you can actually earn them in the game if you go to the explore tab down here where you can go explore other planets and fight bosses that can get you crates can get you rarer crates than what you can buy or you can go on quest to collect relics that can help get you crates we're not going to talk about a lot of that yet that's actually going to be one of my final tips Spo spoiler alert that uh, this is more for ad advanced players or players who have, have either spent more or have played the game longer to get to those points in the, in the game. So next we're gonna go to some of my tips for getting started to help you guys help you guys as you start out in this game and don't make the same mistakes that I did. So okay, tip number one is very, very simple. Take advantage of your new player protection period. When you first start out the game, you get 24 hours where you cannot be attacked. So you, as you saw when, when I was on this battle screen, players are attacking me, players are stealing my scrap. You are going to lose a lot of scrap from player attacks. The first 24 hours, you don't have to worry about that. So if you are prepared to come in and be aggressive starting the game, you can actually take advantage of that, of that period eat more of that scrap that you're earning from from having high engineering for example so if if you plan to to maybe purchase a little bit of scrap and upgrade your engineering or, or whatever the case is by doing that very early in the game you can have a 24-hour period where nobody's taking that from you. you're able to collect a higher percentage of it than you normally would so take advantage of that 24-hour period start the game when you are able to to really utilize that when i first signed up i kind of i kind of signed up and wasn't really wasn't really prepared didn't know what I was doing hadn't researched the game or anything like that so I did not take take advantage of that 24 hour period but hopefully you guys will so tip number two is to use third party websites so especially if you're on mobile I actually do not use the main terracoregame.com website what I use is Terracore Hub. So this is on the Quest here. Let's go back to my board. This is what you see on the desktop site, but it is also formatted very well for mobile. And I use this, it works very well on the Hive Keychain browser on mobile. When I'm playing on my phone and logging in to collect my scrap or whatever the case is, when, when I'm at work and not supposed to, not, not supposed to be on my phone, but I gotta claim my scrap real quick, just quickly log in, claim it. And uh, it works very, very well on mobile. And I just like this layout better. This kind of works works better for me you can see the the nfts down here so i have five equipped items that uh the, the community was was great and actually actually helped me help me get here so i i acquired some of the some of those items you can see what you've got you can see down here the players to the, the recommended players to attack they have the highest stash that you can steal on the on the same screen there's a marketplace here if you come over to the marketplace you can you can purchase weapons purchase armor upgrade upgrade your stats that way get some nfts even if you're even if you're a new player you can still come and acquire some some nfts fairly uh fairly cheap there so i just like this layout a lot a lot better as well and then i also there, there's also a third party uh third party website here called hivegadgets.com. And if you go to the Terracore section, you can see um, 
you know, I was playing around with uh, with different different things here, but you can type in your username, load up your account, and you can load your enemy targets. I have to load my account first. Okay, load my account, wait for it to load. You can load your, your enemy targets here. And this is also a another third-party website that will show, show different things. One of the things that I like best with this is being able to being able to see the the top attackers at different well, four different accounts to kind of look at what it would what a, somebody with 50 offense or 50 attack would, would be able to see or whatever the case is. And I'm going to talk about that here in in just a second as we go back to to tip go back to go ahead. We're going forward to tip number three. Matt, when you're when you're working on engineering, make sure you upgrade your defense to match. If you're going to if you're going to increase your engineering, increase your passive, uh, your passive scrap that you are going to earn. Make sure you add the appropriate amount of defense. So you're kind of upgrading upgrading engineering and defense at the same time. And one of the ways to see you can kind of calculate how much defense you will need is going back to going back to that website, going back to that hive gadgets website. And what I will do is I will scroll through here and okay. So let's, let's say that I've got, so, so how much defense do I have right here? Let's let's go back. I have, uh, I have 58 defense. So anybody with 60 attack, uh, or so is going to, is going to be able to attack me. So I'm going to scroll down here. I'm going to find somebody else who has 60, uh, attack. I did have 50 and that was what the previous account was on here. Here's 60 account spirit surge. So I'm going to come and I'm going to load up his account here and I want to see what his attacks are. So we're going to load, load that account and then I'm going to come down here, load enemy targets. Now, gotta wait for it to load. I want to make the video faster than my, than the website wants to load. Okay. Load targets. Here we go. So these are, these are going to be who he can attack at with, with, with 60 attack. And what I see is that right now they have about 2.4, their stash is about 2.4, 2.3. So if I am under this threshold, I'm going to be fine. I'm not going to be attacked because somebody that has enough attack to go hit me is going to have the, these other players to attack in front of me. And this can vary based on certain times of the day. So you might you might check it and, and kind of essentially get an idea of, of where is your stash limit. That lets you know, where do I need to claim it? So I can wait. So I know that I can I can wait with my engineering. If we come over here, it shows that with my engineering, I am getting one scrap per hour. So right now I've got 0.183. So I can wait about two hours before I want to claim. If I go any longer, I'm going to be risking getting attacked. So we can kind of kind of calculate that based on my own play style. How often am I able to log in and and claim? If my plan is to be logging in again, you've only got so many claims throughout the, out the day. So you can't just log in and claim every, every hour or, or whatever the case is. So if, if I'm playing and based on your sleep cycle, your play time, how often are you going to be able to log in and claim? If I can log in every four hours to go claim my, my scrap, well, I'm going to be losing a lot there because my scrap, I, I need more defense so I can help protect that. And uh, I, I know I'm, I'm, I'm not using a great example here, but hopefully you guys can kind of understand the point by looking at your engineering, what your mine rate is, how often you're able to log on based on your, your play schedule to, to collect everything. You can see what amount of defense you actually want to have to minimize the, minimize the amount of scrap that gets stolen from you. Right now, I don't get the chance to log on a bunch, so I really should probably have a, a higher amount of defense if I'm wanting to rely on that passive the passive scrap from engineering. So that's number three. Tip number four though, is if you are like me and you can't you can't really log on a lot throughout the day. So I frequently, when I'm working my pharmacy shifts, a lot of times I have 12 hour shifts when I am at least not supposed to be on my phone, supposed to be. <laughs> uh, but there, there's a lot of times when I, when I just can't log on. I'm usually only logging on two to three times a day or so to actually collect my scrap. So I'm going to lose out on a bunch. So I have opted after, after changing some direction here, I've actually opted not to worry too much about engineering, not to worry too much about defense because it's going to get taken from me probably re regardless. I need to have a lot of defense in order to actually protect and everything. So I've gone more with damage. You can see my damage is at, is at 108 here because whenever I come down and attack somebody, 
I can, whenever I do, do an attack, I can claim right away. And I can do, I could log on just once a day and use all my attacks, hit my claim, and I can I can get the max amount of scrap for my for my damage with very minimal logons. When I say max amount of scrap now, yeah, I'd be better off checking throughout the day to see, t okay, maybe there's somebody that's got nine or 10 scrap or, or something like that where I, I could be able to attack them. I could, could wait and, and check to see the optimal times to attack. But but in general, I'm still going to get a very high percentage of, uh, of kind of my, my max scrap that I could get just by logging on one or two times a day, doing my attacks and collecting that. So because I don't log on that much, I have focused on damage. So if that's gonna, if that's kind of going to be your strategy, it's not, it's a game that you don't want to look back on too too much. You just want to log in a few times a day. I highly recommend going after damage because you can still get a ton of scrap that way, even without being around to claim multiple times a day. So tip number four. All right, final tip. We're going back. All right, tip number five is as a new player, unless you're going to spend a little bit of scrap to, to kind of advance your progress, you are not ready for quests or boss fights. The first thing I did when I joined, I wanted to fight a boss. So I came in and I looked at the requirements to go to the next planet. You have to go travel to the planet to fight a boss. I came in here, I saw, okay, we need a thousand favor, 1000 favor and a spaceship. You get one favor by burning one scrap. So I spent a thousand scrap to get my 1000 favor, came in here, got my ship, loaded up, you needed to buy fuel as well. Right now it costs about 85 cents or so on to, to purchase one fuel to travel for the boss fight. I was all ready to go. And then I realized that, yeah, I meet the minimum, minimum requirements, but in addition to that 1000 favor, you really also need luck. Luck is going to be your percent chance of pulling an NFT from that, pulling a, uh, pulling a crate from that boss fight. And my luck is only 2.2%. You can see the, the upgrade rates here. You can also get luck from uh, from purchasing some NFTs or or finding NFTs or however it is. So you, you really need a little bit more luck to, to go out. The recommendation from the community on Discord was you need to have about a thousand stash size here to increase your luck, plus, plus some NFTs with plus luck percent equipped before you go and battle bosses. And with quests, it's going to be a, a similar way. You're going to have to burn flux. You have to spend flux to go on these quests. And with quests, you can, you can earn some relics that can help you get some, get some crates, but if you don't have upgraded stats, the essentially the the amount that you're getting back is just not going to not going to be worth it. So I got a thousand favor here. That ultimately was not a very efficient way to spend my spend my funds, un unfortunately. So it does give me plus critical hit chance, and critical hit chance increases the amount of scrap that I steal when I attack players. So it does help me a little bit. But in terms of efficiency, I would have been far better off upgrading my damage, defense, engineering, some of those others, and before I, I went directly to a thousand favors. So right now I'm working on getting my, my damage up and getting my stash eyes up. So hopefully eventually I can, can go and fight, fight some bosses, but I'm just not ready to do that quite yet. So there are my five tips, some of the mistakes that I made. Hopefully you guys can get off to a faster start using some of those tips. If you are a TerraCore player and you've been playing the game for longer than I have, and you have some tips you wanna offer, or maybe some commentary on the five tips that I offered, definitely leave some comments comments down below. I will leave the Discord link to TerraCore as well. Go join there, their community is awesome. Oh, here's a bonus tip, number six, that I actually did find out right away because I happened to be in their Discord, but a lot of people might know. Bonus tip number six, go join their Discord. You can earn a scrap by being active in their Discord. They have a bot that distributes scrap based on, based on your activity in the Discord. I don't know the exact formula or exactly how it works, but if you go chat in their, in their Discord server, you can earn scrap. So that's another good way that you can earn a little bit of scrap to help you help you get started, help you along, along your way. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you go check out this game again. I do have a referral link down below. Hope you guys see me in Splinterlands as a member of the TerraCore game.com guild. 
And I'll be seeing you guys out on the battlefield. Go join so I can go steal your scrap. Don't touch mine. <laughs>